Form Next 2023 at the Duet 3D booth with my friend, Tony. I see. Oh man, careful your microphone there, man. Yeah. All these wires all over the place. And it's actually indicative of what we're gonna talk about because on this desk are things that are more targeted towards a business person rather than a consumer. You know, and because we talk about duet boards and in my area have been really desktop 3D printers. But you're showing something here that's actually kind of tailored to a larger segment. Absolutely. So we supply control boards, motors, and that sort of thing into an industrial segment. That's why we're at Form Next. That makes sense. Yeah, it's very an much industrial an, an, show. an industrial yeah. show. And so, yeah, one of the one of the things we're launching this year are our closed loop NEMA 23 motors. Um, Can I see that? Absolutely. Little closed ahead. loop NEMA 23. Yeah, this is a massive motor. And that's the one without brakes. The one with the one with a brake is significantly heavier again. So you mentioned a closed loop motor. Let's right. let's really quickly go over what typical 3D printers that most people are familiar with have. They're running a, a NEMA 17 in open loop mode, which is a very low cost solution. And the way that you get around potentially skipping steps and all of that is you just massively overspec the system. You give it a lot more power in the NEMA 17 than it actually needs to carry out what it does on a day-to-day -day basis. That's when we're saying motors have an amp or more, yeah, of, more. of power yeah, and, uh, but but when we're skipping steps, if a, if a machine skips steps, that's when we would, that would be indicative of a layer shift, right? You get, yes, you, you, you get a layer shift. You probably have to scrap the print. And when you're doing it on a desktop machine, that's a pain. But when you're doing it on a machine with a meter plus build area, <laughs> use, and, and you know it's a five day print, uh, closed loop suddenly becomes much, much more essential. Like required at this point, right? I would say yes, it's yeah, required. Okay. Yeah. And plus I'm holding a NEMA 23. Absolutely. Because these larger machines need larger motors to run all the components, right? Absolutely, yes. And now you said this is new. Uh, we're launching it right now. We've uh, we've got it in production and we're just starting to ship to the first few of our customers next week. Now, new meaning, has Duet not done closed loop before? I don't know. So no. the, 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 what we've done here, the, the newness is the, the tightness of the integration. So to connect this up to the system, you just put a can FD bus and power onto the motor, uh, and you can just daisy chain the motors, and it makes it very, very easy, very, very quick, and very, very economical from a wiring perspective uh. to connect this up and integrate it into a machine. We also offer a standalone closed loop board. Oh, so you, you have these? We've had these okay. for, for, for a while now. I think that's what I was familiar with before. We still are offering these, and they're still a good solution for some people, because as we grow out this product range, we're going to get more and more motor sizes and powers. But right now, what we're offering initially fits one range. But with this board, you can go up, go up 6.3 amps. We're talking about like <laughs> past the NEMA 23, we're starting into NEMA 34 range of motors. So much larger. People out there, I mean, they know about NEMA 17s, NEMA 23s, but motors get big. Motors get very, very big. Big, 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 big yeah. motors. And cool. we've got to start somewhere. So NEMA 23 was exactly the right place to start, but a bunch of our customers are already bigger. And so this provides them with a solution. Now you said this is one without a brake, yeah. this is with a brake. That's correct. Now what is a brake in closed loop motor control? Um, it doesn't have to be on a closed loop motor, oh. but typically you're pairing it with on a machine where both things make sense. So on a normal X, Y axis, you don't really need a brake, but we've got uh, customers with gantries or beds where you've got many, many, many kilos in the bed and many, many, many kilos in the print. And so if for any reason you lost power, or you wanted to pause the machine or anything like that, you do not want the possibility of the bed pushing down under gravity, back feeding, and, and, and oh. it's a safety case or anything like that. Oh yeah, if one of those motors, if you don't power it, it loses position. And well, you'll definitely lose position. The other worst thing is like, if you imagine you've lost power, you open the door and the bed's like coming crashing down. So this is, this is a, not a good thing. So the brakes that we have, they lock on as soon as they lose power. So you apply power to them to open, oh. so the motor moves. So as soon as you take power away, or in our case, as soon as you disable the motor, we put the brake on. So it allows you to lock position, uh, deal with power failure, s improve oh, safety, uh, okay. or, or, all of those kind of things. But that's really cool because when we talk about mission critical prints and the business yeah. use case for additive, yeah. massive machines making big things over many days, yeah. if for some reason a power loss happens, yeah. like it's not just losing a, a, a crystal dragon that you have you know, on your build plate, we're talking about automotive and aerospace parts, mm -hmm. possibly four or five figures in value yes. that are essential for the business use case. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense then why a brake would be needed in, in certain scenarios. And that's why we're offering both models. So the only difference between these two models is the brake. Oh, well, that's it? Yeah, that's the, they're, oh. they're, the, they're the same motor length to start with, the same control system. They're still 48 volts, up to 48 volts, but 
This one has the brake, that's the only. The demonstrations that you have here for closed loop though, I see these things moving back and forth. Yeah. Uh, I think I can I can hold on to this and stop it, right? Yeah, if you hold on, grab it, grab onto it and okay. you can stop it. Oh, then it catches up. And then it catches up. The reason why we've got these here is not just to show closed loop control, but also to show something that by the way that we uh, are tightly integrated and actually in both of these, our control systems with the motors and the closed loop, we can get a lot of data in real time out of the system to back to the Duet mainboard and then offer it to our customers to do what they want with the data. So we're not in the space of trying to grab all the data from all, from all of our customers, but we want to offer it to them as something they can do things with. I see, so they can they can actually action off of the data. Yeah. You have a, you have a a list of everything that you can provide, yeah. and they can be like, oh, this is great, yeah. and they can figure out how that data implements in their system in order to increase productivity or reduce yeah. failures. Absolutely, so I, one use case for this is, if, if a closed loop motor loses position a lot, you've got to pause the print, you've got to work out what's happened. But what happens if an axis is very slowly uh, you know, needing maintenance, maybe it needs some lubrication, or there's something like that, so the error is slowly changing, it's not gone, so bad that you can't run the machine, but you know you need to carry out your maintenance. You need to do lubrication and all of that kind of stuff. So that that ability to build up large amounts of data uh, and then action off of that is something that we were highlighting oh. how easy it is to do for for our customers using Duet. That's really cool. Yeah. I know that uh, a lot of times on machines that we have on the consumer side, just a little reminder: hey, don't forget to grease your rods or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But you actually have closed loop control and the ability to give data back to those the, the machine owners to say, yeah. oh, something is slightly out of spec. Yes. Not just a failure case, yeah. but out of bounds, plus or yeah. minus. So that's both the, cool. Both the machine owners, but also the machine manufacturers. Because if, they, if they've asked their customers to give them the data and they've agreed and all of that, they now have data across their whole fleet. So they can start to spot problems way out in advance and kind of do oh. predictive maintenance and all and, and all of these kind of things. From, from well, that's kind of handy because when we talk about businesses and uptime, yes. it would be, it's really great if you, if, I mean, they, they have lots of service contracts, right? Yeah. You know, I, IT and otherwise mm -hmm. for people to come out and fix things, yeah. but to anticipate problems and to be able to schedule in that, schedule in that. Yeah, yeah and now, now that ability yeah. translates over to motors and motion systems. The motors and the motion systems, just one part of the, the amount of data that we're offering up wow. to our to our customers, yeah. But it's useful. It's actionable data. Yeah. And oh, it's that's also amazing. not our data. We're not trying to kind of steal everybody's data and <laughs> and keep it for ourselves. We're enabling our customers to take the useful action to them with that data. Yeah. And that's that's perfect. I love yeah. being able to to tell people that it's not it's not telemetry. Yeah. that you're trying to get uh, data from and compile into reports. You're like, this is all of the access you have. Yeah, that's what, what we're demonstrating want? here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the kind of the neat things that I saw on here, may I, may yeah. I grab this? Go, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, we got to show this earlier mm -hmm. live, and this is the Revo Roto. Yeah. But on the back of it is a board. That's, and that's right. you, right? Yes. OK, talk a little bit about this. We designed a, a tool board. This is not the first tool board that we designed, but this is the first one we've designed very, very specifically for this extruder. And the, what we've done here is provided all exactly the connectors that E3D provide. So to add this to the extruder is just plugging all the wires that, that are already there. So there's no crimping, no wiring to get it to this point. Okay. So that's quite quick. The that's other cool, really great, yeah. yeah. The other cool thing, uh, I mentioned the CAN-FD bus that's and, right. and how the motors are connected together. So this is another device on the bus. So when you add this tool to your machine, you only need to run power and CAN bus to the tool head, oh. massively making uh, wiring cheaper, wiring simpler, wiring quicker. To do wiring properly is actually very expensive. We don't see it done well in the desktop space. Quite no, often, we don't. But, but like, <laughs> Not on the machines I've built anyway. But to, to use like extremely highly flexible cables because that's going to be moving around 24 seven for right. hopefully many, many years. That's the goal. The wiring is very expensive. So reducing it down to just four wires that are constantly moving cuts the cost. And, and we like to integrate fun things. So this has got a <laughs> this has got an accelerometer on it, which a lot of or which all our toolboards do actually. But for this one we added scanning Z probe support. So we added a little connector, the, the circuitry on there. And well, that's a tiny little ribbon cable. And then yeah, there's the coil that, that allows oh, there you it to, is. to fast scan the bed. Well, that's right. Yeah. Uh, over here at your booth, actually, you have yeah. a machine actually demonstrating yeah. the scanning ability. Yes, and it's that, doing that... 420 points in less than 10 seconds. So. But, but here, you you made this. Like, it's a board that powers 
everything that this extruder needs with just everything plugging into it. Yeah. You've also like, hey, here's an accelerometer because why not? Yeah. And the Z Pro, like yeah. you just plug it in right here Absolutely. and you're good to go. Yeah. And at that point, it's four wires, two power, two data, yeah. back to the board that they're yeah. running. And all the data collection that I spoke about, this isn't closed loop, but a lot of the other data collection, like the filament monitoring and all of that, if you plug that in, is also available over the same, the same method. So it's all kind of, we're trying to anticipate and answer people's needs within, within this. Space. That's really cool. Yeah. And the, the coils are customizable. So uh, here's one we're playing with that's designed to fit under a BL touch. You, the BL touch then probes. <laughs> it it probes, probes right through it. Probes right through it. Oh, because yeah. you still need to establish Z or Z. Yeah, we, then, we're recommending that you establish Z and then you can then quickly scan. I see. The whole well, the scanning that I'm seeing on that machine is going pretty quickly. Yes, oh man, this is, this is fascinating. And I love that it's a look at Duet 3D at the business, the industrial side. I yeah. love seeing that because there's some really cool motors that not a lot of people know about that you're like, oh yeah, we got this. Yeah, absolutely. Tony, this is amazing. Thank you. This is amazing. People are going to want to know more though. So at that camera right there, look into there and tell them where they can find out more about the Duet 3D business offering. The best thing to do is to come to our website, www.duet3d.com. Duet3d.com, there we go. We'll put it down in the description. Well, listen, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Can bust FD all the things. You like that? I love it. And as always, high five. Bring it in. Nailed it.